Hello, welcome to this video, and I am sorry for the two-week hiatus. I wasn't planning that, but I got, I got COVID, yeah. And I might upload a video describing my experience, because I wasn't expecting it to be as bad. Yes, I am. I got, I had two shots and then a booster, so. And I have to get another booster soon, but yeah. So that's why I was gone, but that's not what today's video is about. This video is basically discussing underrated Taylor Swift songs. Now, people are gonna say, she is one of the most popular artists in the world. There is no way there are any underrated songs, but you're all wrong. Well, not all of you, but the ones who say that, you're wrong. Because while she does have a very large fan base, a lot of like the general public, don't know like the deep cuts and these are my favorite deep cuts so i am i am going to provide four songs for each era for each album and era i'm going to be equal unlike taylor on the heiress tour snub big speak now and debut but we're not going to talk about that speaking of debut let's start with debut clearly invisible i think that song is super underrated because the same people who like you belong with me with like invisible because it's like the same it's like the same tra trajectory and story like teardrops on my guitar you belong with me invisible like they're all the same everybody knows you belong with me and teardrops on my guitar definitely has some popularity but invisible is left out even though i feel like okay it might not be my favorite out of the three, but it's definitely underrated among the three. Because it is a bonus track on debut, and debut is not very known. Number two is Tied Together with a Smile. I will never stop talking about this. This is one of my favorite songs ever in her discography, ever. The way it is set up and how relatable it is, it is very relatable. I just feel like the second verse doesn't get spoken about enough. And like the whole tie together with smile, but it's coming undone. Like that whole like metaphor is great. Now, is it the best song about its subject? No, I don't think so. And yes, it doesn't have a bridge, which is why it is not like super top tier. But I feel like as a song in general is very relatable. It's very slow, so it's easy to get into and the second verse. Next, speaking of, so for debut, I put a lot of slow songs. Like, the whole debut album as a whole is underrated. But there are definitely more popular songs. Yeah. Next is Cold Is You. It is underrated among the track fives. Even though I feel like it is one of the better track fives. Now, is it the best track five? Definitely not. But I feel like for her age, especially in this song, we have to remember that all of these songs are written between the ages like 12 and like un maybe under to 15. 15. But yeah, I just love the bridge and then her delivery in the song. The emotion that comes from her voice, that's why I'm scared for the re-record. I just love how the imagery, like, painting the walls this shade of gray. It's similar to, like, the Dear John imagery, imagery, but, like, obviously not as, you know, advanced at this point. But it is getting there. I just love, I just love the way it is set up. And, you know, the build up to the bridge and then the slow down and then the send off of the song. It is, I love it. It is a very good track five. Get to the last one. I'm going to explain about this quickly because it's the outside. This is, she wrote this song by herself at 12. 12, bitch. In the lyrical content. Like, is it the best in the category that it is based on? No. No. Okay. However, for the age that she wrote in the maturity and just how can I try to be better if nobody ever lets me in and I'm just on the outside looking into everybody else. It's just the perfect middle school anthem and I just feel like it doesn't get the 
attention that it deserves. Next, we are going to go to Fearless. So the first song on Fearless is Tell Me Why. Why is, tell me why this is so underrated. I had, I had to. I just love how, first off, like the melody of this song. And then this is basically a song about an abusive relationship. It, I think it belongs on red. I mean, not like the, like the production, the production about to change, but like the lyrical content matches with like the red album vibes. It matches with, they constantly push you down, they like underestimate you, but then they only want you around, like all this shit. I just love the bridge, like you're sick and tired of all the heartbreak and all this shit. And I just feel like on the album that it is on, it is too mature. Like the content is like very like abusive not like very abusive but like abusive like manipulative relationship like it's like red like i said so i just feel like it's very mature for the album that it is on superstar why do people not like this song i don't understand i personally love the melody and then the lyrical content obviously but it is like the perfect celebrity crush song that nobody talks about next we were happy this is a vault track this is a vault track on Fearless, and it just doesn't get the the recognition it deserves for the emotional quality of the song. I get us talking about how when you first got into this relationship, you were so happy, and you were gonna, you know, get married and like buy a farm and all of this shit. But then the relationship just goes and it gets stale, and now like, you were happy at one point, and you like still have love for this person, but just didn't work out and I feel like that's the saddest it's one of the saddest like themes of love like it wasn't like abusive or anything but it just didn't work and that's just why I like this song Leave for fearless is jump then fall this perfectly describes I feel like when you have a crush on somebody it's like enchanted but like not as it is nowhere near as grand as enchanted don't get me wrong but I just really love the melody, the way she delivers, especially Taylor's version of the song. I just feel like it's so underrated among like the bonus tracks for us, which I know, mixed bag. But I just feel like this and Superstar are the better ones. We're gonna get to my favorite speak now. And it was very hard. Not as hard as Fearless in like 1989 or whatever, but it was just hard to think about what songs I would personally consider underrated. Because, like, you might not agree with me. I didn't put Dear, Dear John is not on this list because it is very, like, I think it's, like, very, like, passively rated on TikTok and, like, all this shit. So that is not here. But I had to be very careful with deciding what would actually be underrated considering the content and everything. So, first we got The Story of Us. First off, this describes a situationship perfectly. It's like the situationship song. It's like the imagery of, you know, you're sitting around and you meet with this person and it's just like, oh shit. And they're just acting like you don't exist. Like it's that awkward time after breakup. They act like you just don't exist. And I just like how it starts with, like we used to think when they would tell a story of us, but then like the story of us didn't work out. So now we can't tell the story of us and this is the end of our story. And I just like how it views every situation, everything in life as a story, as a beginning, middle, and end, whether it's a happy or unhappy ending. Next, we have ours. I know, I know, it's about jerkface John Mayer, so is the story of us, but I just like how this song perfectly describes how it doesn't matter how anybody else feels about your relationship, as long as you're comfortable, you're fine. Obviously, in her situation, no. Like, John Mayer, no, ew. But, you know, like any other like situation, like in the RS music video, it was like that guy. Like he's in the military, but everybody's just like, oh, whatever. So the next song that I think is underrated is Never Grow Up. Now, I know like there's this like trend on TikTok for it, but let me explain. I don't think that this song gets the rec recognition in the way that it is written that it deserves. Okay, rip, listen. So this song, this song describes the biggest fear and also is immensely relatable in life growing up. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to deal with responsibilities. Nobody wants to deal with the emotional burden of growing up. But it happens whether you like it or not. And this song perfectly describes how 
you're growing up and you're thinking all these things are happening but like everybody else is growing up around you and you just don't want anybody who is younger than you you're looking at them and you're just like you don't know what, you don't know what life is going to have in store for you and it is scary because you never you never know so it is like this is one of her songs that i feel like are the most relatable because you know, relationships come and go, whatever, but growing up is a constant thing that everybody deals with on a daily basis. And that is why it is probably my most underrated pick, because nobody dissects it in the way that it is supposed to be dissected. Except, you know, like, the people who react to the album that I've seen, they've done a very good job doing it. But, like, the general public, or people who, like, hear it on TikTok, they just feel, oh, yeah, never grow up, but it also describes, like, People growing up around you and how when you look at other people you're just like shit you don't want to know what is going to happen in your life just just stay little <sighs> okay that, that's, that's let's move on to oh we're moving on to more sadness for the last kiss now listen i know this is a very popular song among our fandom but general public no i know it is slow people say it drags some people might say it drags but i disagree I feel like it perfectly describes the feeling of longing and like the total immense sadness that comes after a horrible relationship or breakup and just how just how you really feel about it like this song describes like all the thoughts you, like you're reminiscing going through like all the good times but then all the bad times and then all the times you're just like oh this wasn't right but I liked it because it was you and then how you never expect anything to go away and how you can plan for a change in the weather and time but you never plan on anybody changing their mind and just leaving you can never plan on like this ending when you're starting it you never plan on it ending but it ends and then you have to go with that with the longing of that and i just also feel like her delivery in the song is why i'm so scared for the video chords because oh my god the emotion in the song alone and i just love how it doesn't pick up until the bridge because before it's just the remembering and then the bridge is when the immense emotion comes like how you watch your life picture like you used to watch them sleep how you feel to forget you like you used to feel them breathe like all this shit like it doesn't the beat doesn't ramp up in the song until the emotional concept gets there like before it was just like longing like remembering and then boom the emotions come like right after the remembering the emotions come <laughs> i've been describing these two songs for way too long let's get to red and you know red i thought would be hard but it's actually it was actually fairly easy to decide for red so the first one is the moment i knew now, the moment I knew it deals with the relationship, yes, but I feel like the best thing about this song is that it can also be applied to, like, a familiar relationship or, like, a friend who just forgets that your birthday was there, and, like, you're just looking around at the camp, you just, people are singing, like, happy birthday to you, then you're looking around and you just see that they're not there, and you just break down, because you're like, how can you forget a birthday? Jade, how can you forget a birthday? Like, come on, that's, that's like number one shit. How do you do that? Anyway, besides that, I just feel like it is in the bridge, like how the instrumental is, how it ramps up in the chorus, and especially at the end where it's like, what would you do if the one who meets most of you is the one who didn't show? If you look around at your party, you're, when you're blowing out your candles and you just see that they're not there, how would it feel? Like, honestly, this song made me picture, like, the perfect, like, book scene in my mind. This song. And I just love the writing and how immersive it feels and how it's immensely relatable no matter what situation. Anyway. Next, Forever Winter. This is one of my favorite songs ever, and it's my favorite song I've read. I feel like it is very... It is underrated, and it is immensely relatable, not just for... Not just for yourself, but other people. Usually you will notice how somebody is very strugg is like struggling and they're using other things to combat that or they're They're just not the same and you can tell but you don't want to really say anything But you also don't want to just let it go But then you also don't want to lose it in the process of dealing with that delicate situation And then you're just like you're just screaming 
and you're just trying to say like, oh, like I'm here, like I'm here for you. And when somebody's in that situation, obviously it doesn't seem like that. So it's mentally relatable from like that side. Also, I feel like it is relatable to like us, how we feel like all is lost. And we just feel like it's Taylor telling us like, I'll be summer sun for you forever. I'm hugging you. It's like a hug. It feels, it feels great, especially when you feel like nothing was there. This song made me ball my eyes out when I listened to it because, no. So anyway, my last two I'm gonna breeze through. Sad Beautiful Tragic I feel is underrated because the bridge alone for Sad Beautiful Tragic, like I know it's very slow. It's like Last Kiss, but I just feel like the, the slowness represents in how you're just feeling how it was sad, beautiful, and tragic, and you're going through it slowly as you're slowly remembering everything. In the bridge, distance, timing, breakdown, fighting. Like it's not really, they're not really phrases, they're just words thrown together that fit phrases. I love how it goes. And then lastly is begin again. I feel like it is very underrated in a sense on its own album because the, what it represents on red especially is after like a very bad relationship or very bad whatever you're just going into a new fresh situation and you're going through like you're enjoying going through that part of like dating again how it's like so nice and the person that you're meeting now is way way more respectful but you're also just like hmm have your guard up because the last time so i just love how it represents that in 1989 i'm going to breeze through because i just feel like i don't have a good like reason for a lot of these because a lot of these most of this album is very popular so i'm just gonna breeze through so first one is you are in love per the, like the feelings of you are in love describes being in love i know places like the visual of i know places and how people are like chasing you but you're like running away with your significant i think that's great or third is how you get the girl because i just feel like she gave you the instructions bro like this song is the instructions of how to fix your shit after after a breakup or after like an argument like it's literally the instructions and then also i love the melody and then the last song is clean and i do have a good reason for this one i just feel like it's not talked about much how after you go through a horrible situation how you're just drowning and you feel like you're drowning constantly so you get to the point where the water the water is evaporating and you just feel, you just feel like you're finally free and clean and you can breathe again. I just love how that, what that symbolizes. Okay, next, reputation. First off is gorgeous. Why do you, why does everybody hate that? Why do a lot of Swifties hate that? Why didn't nobody know this song? It's like Enchanted vibes. It perfectly describes, obviously it's not as grand as Enchanted by any means. But it perfectly describes how it feels like to fall in love with somebody and to just view them as this thing that's like so gorgeous. And like the bridge is funny. Like I love the bridge. Next we have dancing with our hands tied. I know the instrumental and the acoustic version on the rep tour, much better. But dancing with our hands tied is on this list because of the story alone. Like the story of dancing with our hands tied, how it's like a secret forbidden love and you're just trying to shield that away from everybody else so you don't get any more hate from that but then you're also trying to be with this other person and it's just super difficult to have like a balance and you just want them to understand like oh, i still care for you but i just don't want this to happen anymore the last two are so it goes in dress very dirty i know but so it goes i just like how how like it feels like you're in a daydream james dean daydream you're you're in a daydream and you're just there until you get to the bridge and you hear the one two three and it just puts you in that mood and it's very like sultry and i love it now dress i love dress because of the emotional impact and I like the bridge of dress is amazing i just feel like dress perfectly describes like when you're with somebody and you finally feel free they, you know take they, you let them take their dress off because you finally feel there. Now we're gonna get into Lover. And Lover, these songs are just underappreciated, not like, okay, underrated, but mostly underappreciated. And no, Cruel Summer is not here. I forgot that you existed. 
Why does everybody hate on this song? It's so fun. I love the Drake lyric, even though it's cringy. I just love how it's... It, she had to address something for reputation, right? Like, obviously, New Year's Day is a bookend, but I feel like this song perfectly describes the carelessness of lover. Like, obviously, Cruel Summer, whatever. I disagree that it should be the opener. I, I love this song as an opener. Just as a... Just as a bookmark from reputation to lover. I love it. And I just like how fun it makes you feel like. It just makes you feel like you're on top of the world. Next, Afterglow. I feel like this describes anxiety and like the feeling of overthinking much better than The Archer does. Like, don't get me wrong, The Archer, whatever. But I just feel like Afterglow describes it perfectly and it deserves, it deserves to be a single. I think he knows is also so fun. It's just, it perfectly describes how when you first get into like a relationship and it's like really good and you just feel like you're like 17 again. I'm still 17, but like, <laughs> like when you get older and you get into like a relationship and it makes you feel like you're a teenager again and you're like thinking about all these things. And I just love how fun it is. And lastly, Paper Rings, which is my favorite. I just love the meaning of when you're so in love with somebody and you're so like, good with somebody and you just want them and you're like that you don't care about like diamonds or money or whatever you just you would marry them with paper rings because you just like them so much or ever more in the same like category like vein because it's the same vibes obviously folklore is much more popular so it is very hard for this but actually it's not because exile first i know not very underrated in like our fandom but in the general public, the last time you'll love Exile. I love how the voices match together perfectly. I love the lyrical content. I like how it just feels like you're in an exile screaming out to somebody. I just love it. And I love the back and forth. So next we have Peace. Peace describes how it's like Afterglow. The overthinking is going to lead to the damage. How you're always like a... You're like a bomb just waiting to go off and you're just like, I can never give you the peace and stability that you deserve. Even though you know a person still like wants you and everything, but you just don't feel like you're ever going to be good enough because you can never give them that stability and peace. Next is Invisible String. This song is so cute. <laughs> like I just love how it feels like all these like little moments that you didn't notice before connected back to the situation and the person that you ended up with. I love the concept of that, of like little Easter eggs throughout your life that you didn't realize before, but once you get with them, you realize it. And then the last great American dynasty, the storytelling. She bought the house with this Rebecca who was part of this million dollar corporate. I think it was the Industrial Revolution. Anyway, Evermore, Gold Rush. Gold Rush. I just love the cadence of this song. Do I wish it had more lyrics that didn't repeat? Yes. However, I feel like the lyrics that it does have perfectly describes how you feel when you're so in love with somebody. Just for storytelling alone, 10 out of 10. We're gonna get to this long story short. Now, long story short, I feel like it's a nice, it would be a nice bookend to her career I know we don't want to think about that, but like bookend our career, I feel like it'll be great for that. However, I also feel like the way it like looks back on all the troubles in your life and you're just looking back on it now a couple years down the road and you're just like, this shit just doesn't matter anymore. Like your nemesis will defeat themselves before you get the chance to swing. And I personally love that message. This is closure. The chorus alone love for closure and I just love the interesting production. Like you don't know what's coming next and I love it. Happiness, I know it is very slow. I love slow songs, so don't get, I love, I'm part of Gen Z, but I love slower songs. This, I just feel like it perf perfectly describes the feeling of just complete depression. Not depression, but like the complete downward spiral. Very hard situation. We get to Midnight's. Midnight's was very commercially successful, obviously, but there are still underrated songs, surprisingly. I have Paris. Now, I feel like this is underrated to the general public, not towards the fandom, but still, the lyrical quality of Paris. The way Paris, the serotonin that Paris makes me feel 
is why I had to put it on this list whether it is truly underrated or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you're on your own, kid. I just feel like it's underrated among the track fives. Like, it's not my favorite, obviously, but the one lyrics in, like, the bridge, like, the host of parties and star my body, like, I'd be saved by the perfect kiss. Like, that line just made me break down. <laughs> Like, obviously, it's not the best track fire, it's not the best song ever, but I just feel like it perfectly describes growing up and wanting to be like everybody else perfectly. Next, we have Question. Why does everybody hate on Question? Like, okay, I don't understand what's going on either. That's only something that, like, Harry Styles and Taylor would understand. But I just love how there's so many throwbacks. So many throwbacks to 1989, so many throwbacks to all the songs about him. And I just love how the song tells a story so effortlessly and in a short period of time. And lastly, for the last song of the video, we have Sweet Nothing. This should have been the closer, even though I love Mastermind, don't get me wrong, I love Mastermind. But this would have been the perfect, like, closer. I just love how all of this shit is happening in near her. Like, outside, you could just come home and feel like nothing else matters because you're in your sweet nothing. And... And how everything you wanted for like this one thing was nothing. You just wanted this, this like home. And I just love the feeling of that. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please comment any other underrated, underrated songs do you personally think are underrated? Because I will gladly consider. And then also just comment any video ideas. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Support this small ass channel. My goal is 100 subscribers by the end of june maybe but anyway thanks for watching this video i'll see you all next time and bye